groups grow, hang out. Today we're talking about trends and how to use trends in your garden. We've uh, been doing the trends report now for almost 14 years and uh, this year we've decided to look at really how you can use trends to help grow your business. This is one of the reasons we do these trends is so that you can stay ahead of that curve. So we wanted to figure out where in the world are these trends being used. So we ran a contest this year and we had uh, many applicants and out of those applicants we chose two very deserving businesses that really ha are in tune to the trend. Uh, our two, uh, we chose uh, Carl from Smart Gardener. Can you wave to us, Carl? And Christy from Garden Nerd. And what's exciting about both Christy and Carl is that they are really using today's technology to help consumers, to help people learn how to grow their own food, how to plan, how to, and Christy's doing uh, classes as well, uh, and how to uh, take advantage of the organic food movement, which we have been seeing. Uh, really start in 2005, the, uh, growing your own food, but now we're going on to growing superfoods. So Carl, all right, so Carl, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and, and Smart Gardener and how you've gotten excited about growing your own organic food and becoming a global leader in this industry. Well, sure. Can everybody hear me okay? Can you hear me? Yes. Are you fine? Okay, great. Well, great. Thank you for having us. This is really exciting. And yeah, Smart Gardener is a online platform to help people plan, plant, and manage organic food gardens. We started with uh, Smart Gardener in 2012, and we've also added a full service component called Smart Gardener Backyard, where essentially we drop organic gardens in your backyard and we run them like lawn care. All right, so Carl, if you could tell Keep going. Uh, we How also you... connect the 400,000 uh, U.S. landscapers to the over 42 million uh, households in America that are growing something edible in their garden and we're hoping to turn well, them into a potent and powerful really force exciting. for food production. Yeah, so Carl, when you say you're doing the backyard platform as well, what, what do you mean? Well, we essentially drop organic gardens in your backyard and we run them like lawn care. So we help people plan, you manage, know. and harvest we also uh, local food gardens. So you're growing, you're actually going in and, and doing this is not a virtual garden you're talking about. This is an actual, you're actually going into people's backyards and planting their vegetable gardens for them? Yes, this is a real, honest to goodness, get food out of your backyard garden project. That's very exciting. So Christy is also working with food growers and she is running classes as well as doing um, online classes. Christy, can you tell us a little bit about the Garden Nerd? Sure. Uh, Garden Nerd is has been around. I've been doing this full time since 2008, and uh, the website existed in some form or another before that. But um, I do classes, consulting, and food garden design and installation to teach people how to grow their own food. Um, and for me, it's the really important thing is getting people. Well, you know with the rise in awareness about genetically engineered crops and the excessive use of pesticides, herbicides, synthetic fertilizers, etc., more people are really wanting to take back control over their food sources and so Garden Nerd helps them do that and gives them the confidence and the hand-holding that they need to feel like they can do this because it's it's this huge subject gardening and, and so one step at a time we help them lower their carbon footprint, get closer to their food, and preserve plant species because that's, you know, seeds are going extinct as well because, um, you know, certain big ag companies are buying them up and patenting them or taking them off the market entirely. So it's our job to keep things going so that the home gardener can keep growing. So uh, we are so happy to have you all both here and you're all very lucky you are have as your coaches today uh, Robin Horton with Urban Gardens and Shauna yes. Coronado. So right now, Shauna, one of okay. both Shauna and Shauna, we have on our on our trends report this year, we have featured both Shauna and Robin in some trends that they've been seeing um, in the in the last year. So Shauna, why don't you talk first about how what you've been seeing in the marketplace and and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about 
not that we all don't know who you are, but <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So I run the website shawnacoronado.com, and what I do is try to educate the end consumer on gardening trends, on how to garden, getting people out there to think about growing healthy. And I have 170 videos on YouTube with almost a million hits. So I think it's something that people are very, very interested in right now. It, you know understanding how to garden. In fact, I think that garden's making a comeback. When we talk about trends, organic and GMO free, we keep using these words over and over, but what those words really mean is that the younger families, they want to eat healthy. They want to understand how to grow better. So it's really smart for the garden industry companies, the IGCs and the nurseries and the other people in us to really tap into those trends and use them in their marketing. Yes, we think that's a. We see the food gardening as a great gateway to gardening in general and to bring in the younger consumer. Shauna, how would you say this? Uh, we were just talking about this, and, and Carl and Christy, why don't we start with you, Carl? Since you really are, um, you've got how many users do you have now? I've used uh, your site before. About I've heard my garden. Thousand. I'm sorry, how many? 180,000. 180,000. So yeah. what, what are you seeing? That's a lot of consumers. What are you seeing? And I know y'all are tracking some trends with your users. What are some things that you're seeing in uh, what people are growing and, and how this, this uh, gardening movement is headed? Well, we see that consumers are absolutely interested in finding any sort of on-ramp where they can expand their sustainable and uh, green initiative in their own space at work at home at their school at their church community gardens there's a, a massive expansion of local food production and it's not just gardens we see it with chickens and bees and fruit trees and berry bushes and you know all of the kinds of things motivated to uh, or passionate about uh, trying to get started and deploy in their own little green space of the world and uh, we think that the other big trend is uh, how consumers are choosing unique varieties of mm -hmm. uh, fruit and vegetable plants so we see a big disconnect between what the garden centers and the mass market retail is interested in positioning to the consumer versus what they're actually planting in their garden we have some pretty good data around uh, the top varieties uh, by really every geography in the country and we see that as a, a pretty unique uh, subset of uh, where this organic food movement is going and it's been uh, something we've been paying a lot more attention to lately. Yep, one of the trends that we saw this year was uh, we're calling it superfoods uh, for mm -hmm. supermodels and planting uh, quinoa and of course kale but dandelions and uh, a lot of young men are growing hops so they can make their own beer and people are you know more and more people are growing uh, berries and grapes and making uh, beverages not just wine but I make my green smoothie in the morning out of stuff I take out of my garden or my yard. <laughs> I thought you were going to say cocktails. I, <laughs> I have a cocktail in the morning too. I I seriously, I built a cocktail garden this year in my front lawn, and I, so I expanded that front lawn vegetable garden. And what happened was, it, I mean, I've got an amazing response. I started making a series of little mini cocktail videos that I have up on YouTube, and they're super short and super easy to do. Uh, but people go crazy, and it's all about the herbs and connecting the herbal garden to um, your. I hear everybody. Well, I thought maybe you guys say, Shauna, that you had a great response to the people in your neighborhood coming over at five o'clock for cocktails. <laughs> That's the way to do that. Absolutely, <laughs> that too. It's been fantastic and surprising. And so now everyone wants to grow herbs for more than the traditional herbal thing. You know, there's aromatherapy and there's food and there's cocktails. It's kind of exciting. Yes. So, Christy, what are you seeing now? Uh, are you, Christy, are you working with uh, urban gardeners? Suburban gardeners or all of them? I'm I'm working with kind of everybody. It's a uh, mostly okay, homeowners, thanks. but a lot of my students are apartment dwellers as well. So mm -hmm. I specialize in small space biointensive gardening. So I'm trying to get people growing as much stuff in as little amount of space as possible and utilizing their space. Now 
I'm here in Los Angeles where we are suffering a terrible drought and so yes. we are really working hard to get people to rip out their lawns and if they're going to use water they should use it for something that feeds them. So um, we're you know, doing a lot of drought tolerant and native plants out here and encouraging people to learn more about it and um, and then you know putting in front yard vegetable gardens so that's because I have a I have an orchard in my front yard a little mini orchard I have five fruit trees instead of a lawn and and there's room for that a lot of people don't have room or really good sunlight in their backyard so the front yard tends to be the place to go so my hope is that we're gonna change the way people view that front yard lawn and the the, this kind of outdated American standard that doesn't serve most of us, at least those of us who live where water has to be imported from somewhere else. So yeah. that's a big trend here. So let's uh, talk about, Robin, are you there? I think so. Am I here? You are. Yay! Yay. So I know, Robin, Sorry, everybody. One of the things that I know that um, we used with you on our trends report this year was the different ways, the different, you know, we talked about superfoods, but we also talked about supermodels, different ways to grow food. And you had uh, bay, hay bale gardening, and you had a variety of other different ways of gardening besides just, you know, digging in the dirt. What were some of the trends that you were seeing in different models of gardening? Well, it looked like um, Urban Gardens readers and followers, social followers, um, were super, super, super interested in anything hydroponic. Um, yeah. Although they also wanted to make sh they they're interested in indoor gardening because many many live in cities or very small spaces. Um, and they they I was surprised when I looked at my analytics. Very interested. Those were some of the most trafficked posts, both socially and on the blog. Hydroponic. Now they're also design enthusiasts, so they were looking for hydroponic planters and systems that were um, stylish as well. And a number of them um, have been uh, marketed recently, or or about to be marketed via Kickstarter campaigns. And I just received yesterday three, um, you know, in emails um, about new products that are about to launch. Um, also really nice looking. So. Um, you know, I, I, I was kind of surprised at that personally. I didn't really think that people would be all that interested. I think part of the thing is that they they want things that are, as we all know, that are easy. Um, you don't need a lot of experience to do and, um, and you know, kind of just will do it themselves. So a lot of hydroponic systems have um, timers and self-watering mechanisms and all that and they're clean or perceived as clean as are soilless. So that seems to be one of the you know, biggest trends I've found lately. I don't know, have you all seen the same thing? Oh yeah, we've been seeing hydroponic for a while uh, being... And aquaponics. aquaponics. Aquaponics is really big here. Yeah, I'm about to talk, uh, about to post about a new aquaponic system, um, that a do-it-yourself system that you just overlay onto a fish, a, you know, a standard fish tank. Um, there have been a couple, but this one's really nice looking. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think, um, I think I was surprised, but I think that's one of the things people are looking for. If they certainly, if they don't have any outdoor space, right? Well, all we need is sun and water and some nutrients to grow stuff. We don't really need soil, and you don't is, need sunlight if you have a lamp. So if you have, or if you have the right uh, equipment, exactly. Well, NASA's growing food in space hydroponically now. Um, yes. I don't know if any of you've seen that, but it's um, <laughs> that's what they're 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 working on hydroponic space gardens. So wow. in, in looking at trends, if we could move from the specific trends of food growing just to the general category of trends and how you all have used trends and, and how Shauna and Robin, how you see these two companies taking advantage of trends. I mean, one of the reasons that we do this, this uh, Grow Hangout is so that other companies can learn from our experiences. So mm -hmm. how can we, how do people, A, uh, see trends and how do they then take those trends and incorporate them in their businesses to help them grow their business? So I, if I can take that first, I mean, I think that the, uh, the most obvious thing is that when you're using social media as a company, right, so you're marketing, but you're marketing on the social media level, so mm -hmm. it's not the traditional marketing that's out there, uh, you have a viral aspect to it. So when you are creating a post, let's say vertical gardening, I'm, I'm actually writing a vertical gardening book this season. And so you have a vertical garden example, 
you can then go and, and trend it on your own social media by using hashtags and that sort of thing to reproduce that word, the key, the SEO, search engine optimization, is keywords all over the place and you need that. You broadcast it out to all your people. It's a great way to reinforce your trend. You put it in all your stories and here's something else that's really important that people forget when they're utilizing social media as a uh, marketing tool, for example. Make sure that all of your photos are labeled with the key trend that you're trying to talk about. So, for example, if you have a photo of a vertical wall garden, the words hashtag vertical wall, wall garden can be assigned to that photograph and should be so that more people come to you so that you can direct them to your other social media tools. And in the reverse of that, we also use hashtags to look for trends. And if we see something happening, then we can use a hashtag and to go out there and see who else is writing about stuff and where, where it's happening. I have yeah. another quick idea. You know, one of the things I do when I'm trying to find keywords to use, for example, I'm writing a story about a tomato and how to grow a tomato. I go into Google Ads and use their Google Ad keyword search to find out the most searched words. Well, I do that with trends too. So like wall gardening or vertical wall gardening or whatever trend I'm searching, I go and search it and then I make sure that I I insert the most searched words into my documents, into my photographs, into all my SEO, and it gets far more views that way. Yep. So, I think, uh, go, go ahead. ahead. I was just going to add that um, you know I'm I'm obviously a big proponent of, of optimizing and SEO, but I also feel um, that that you know there are other there are other ways to to attract and engage with people instead of just the robots. Um, and I don't think we, we, we need to do all that. But um, one thing that that's, I do a lot is um, instead of word searches, I do visual searches. And I don't mean just on Pinterest, but um, you can put in a keyword or a trend phrase or something into Google Images mm -hmm. and, um, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and visually see what comes up. And that's a good way to come up with story ideas, too. Mm -hmm. um, because it's just a different it's a different thing and also if you see a an, a an image or something that you like and you can't find it and you want to know more about the source of it and the story behind it um, there's a there's a site called tin eye I don't know if everybody knows about it where Ooh. it's a revert it's an image search let Whoops. me spell that hold let on hold that. I'm in the city <laughs> okay. I think the fire truck's gone um, and that uh, works. Can you hear? Is it T-E-N or T-I-N? It's like the metal tin? Tin I. Like T-I-N, like the metal? Yes. Mm -hmm. I can email it to everybody or, or post it afterwards. So that's kind of useful. And then, of course, Pinterest. And um, I, just, uh, I just like to sort of search and see what everybody else is talking about. And then, um, and then you know, I'm, I'm talking more about the listening side, not the pushing out information side. Right, but, finding out about the trends before they happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you find out things that way, you know, and also go, go on to, um, not just in the states, but go on to uh, award sites, competition sites, design competition sites like the Spoga Gaffa. you know about that, right, um, uh, Susie? Mm -hmm. And you see what's going on in, in Europe and other countries, mm -hmm. and often those things are happening before they happen here. You bet. Yeah, um, I'm so gonna Carl, mm -hmm, go ahead. Carl, I was wondering if Carl and Christy had um, some questions for y'all since they're they're our, our guest winners, and we <laughs> want to give them an opportunity to pick y'all's brains. So uh, let's start with you, Christy. Do you have some questions or some comments on how you've been using trends to grow your business? Well, uh, the main thing is my my book. Which I strategically placed right behind me, <laughs> <laughs> gardening for geeks. And I'm, I'm, you know, I have an audience already, but I'm trying to reach more people, of course, to spread the message, the good news of gardening. And um, it's, you know, I'm always up for ideas on how to improve outreach to people and 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 hit more of a target audience. Oh, I have the answer to that. It so worked for me, and uh, I, I did it out of necessity. Okay, I would fit, I would grow kale. 
on mm -hmm. my blog, I would have a whole story on how to grow kale. And I would get bombed with people that said, I've never cooked kale in my life. I have no idea how to do it. Because in the United States, greens aren't cooked like they used to be, but they're so full of nutrition. And so I started a series on my blog site called $10 or Less Culinary. Mm. Well, something unexpected happened because of that. What happened is I started getting all these culinary followers that followed me because of the culinary, not because of the gardening. And they mm -hmm. would send me notes and say, oh my god, I've never gardened before. So what I call that is cross-pollination, right? Yep. You're bringing yes, in different yep. groups. So I highly recommend that you try going out and, and like selling yourself, if you will, to some of the food groups and partnering. You can partner with chefs. You can partner with writers who are like food writers. Mm -hmm. So you don't always have to invent or make the food photographs yourself. You can also have them contribute to your blog and you can do work for them and it's a great partnership. But what happens um, after, uh, it took me about a year of doing that when I really noticed a huge influx of like totally new people and uh, and bringing gardening to more people. It's been so exciting. So I highly recommend you cross-pollinate. <laughs> Good cool, idea. <laughs> so Carl, I do a lot of that too to try to get um, you know, it, my, my blog is a design blog that's gardening, food and wine, travel, that's sort of advertising trifecta and you can't separate gardening from it. But when I was building the blog, I, I, I didn't, you know, I just reached out to anything ancillary that was, con you know, like a bicycle wheel, anything that was um, related. So people interested in outdoor entertaining um, very likely may be interested in gardening and, and or cooking or both. So I figure whoever is interested in planting it, growing it, harvesting it, cooking it, and serving it, and then maybe wearing some stylish stuff when they do it, um, <laughs> those are all potential audiences. And yeah, eating it on stylish plates and stylish settings. <laughs> so, so Carl, what are you seeing? Um, how are you uh, incorporating trends into growing Smart Gardener? Well, I'm decidedly unstylish, by the way. So <laughs> I can use all the help I can get. Um, <laughs> you know, we're really interested in trying to find ways uh, to identify key influencers. You know, we have a big pool of people. Uh, but we also know that there's some people that have some real insight and uh, have big networks that are associated to other aspects of their life. So we're always interested in trying to find ways to connect uh, to our, our more robust users and try to mine them for good information that we can share across the entire platform of gardeners that are out there. Mm -hmm. So you really have piqued my interest on how you said that you're following some trends from what your uh, users are growing. So what have been some of the big surprises that you're seeing already this year? Well, we certainly see um, uh, more antique varieties of vegetables being chosen, which are only available really through more obscure seed catalogs, mm -hmm. which I think is a very interesting trend. It's not the uh, big seed companies that do mass uh, multiple mailings, but more uh, maybe niche, regional, um, uh, artisanal seed companies. We think that's a, a very interesting trend. The other thing that we're seeing is people who are, uh, their on-ramp to gardening may come from some other place. Maybe they're really concerned about uh, honeybees, and so they mm -hmm. want to develop a beehive. And once they see pollinators in their yard, that gets them more connected to gardening. Mm -hmm. Or chickens is a phenomenon. Oh. Los, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, there's a huge population of people that are uh, raising chickens. And again, that might be the on-ramp that gets people more connected to their outdoor environment. And ultimately, they become gardeners and food growers and uh, getting planting native plants and trying to expand their native green space. Yeah, we, we seem to see a lot of herb gardening being, we, we call it the gateway drug to gardening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, that's, that seems to be the a way many people are getting into gardening because herbs are just so darn easy to grow. And they can make even a store-bought salad taste fresh if you just add some fresh dill to it. So yeah. what questions, Carl and Christy, do you have for these two garden gurus before we wrap it up for the day? Well, I'd love to know what you think about uh, how to develop better virality. How can you uh, push the message out? Uh, maybe 
you know, we can put messages out on social media, but we'd like to see our um, users sort of extending that message uh, more aggressively for us. Do you have any ideas about that? Mm -hmm. I do. If it, if it's okay if I jump in. Jump in. Uh, uh, thanks. Um, I I suggest asking. I know it sounds really obvious, but what many say people that. do is they post this message and they don't ask anyone. They just say, here's my blog, and expect people to go read it, and then they might read it, they might not, and then they don't do anything else with it. So where I put my ask is both at the bottom of the blog post, like I'll ask a question, yeah. you know, or to ask them, can you leave a comment about your grandmother's garden? or something that's emotionally charged and then they're far more likely to leave a comment but on social media that's like Facebook or Twitter I make the ask there too and I'd say that the the second and we all know what social media is here uh, it's about relationship building so every morning I get up at 5 or 6 a.m. I hit the computer and I start building relationships every single day of the year and I think it's really critical for our all our businesses that we're out there building authentic true friendships so if you can build that kind of connection you have a huge following already but like a personal connection to those hundred thousand followers that you're talking about that's what's going to get them to share more because they're going to be enthused about your friendship what yeah you I would echo that um, I think that the, it, it definitely we all know it's about relationship building and engagement um, I have found with um, or the Urban Gardens Facebook page that um, you know, I don't follow any rules. Some people say post one out of four things about yourself. Um, I've never been a rule follower, more of a rule breaker. But um, right now, uh, I, I post a few times a day, and I try to post, um, I, I, you know, start by listening. What are, your, what are your followers like? We're getting about 6,000 new followers a week now. And I wow. think the reason is um, that they, we, we, they like quirky things. That's, that's what we write about, you know, everybody writes or posts different things. So the quirkier, the stranger, the funkier, the better. And um, and we found that we have now about 92% engagement on Facebook. Hmm. Um, you know, if we could do a little, you know, self promotion here. Um, hmm. I was stunned because I was told that the average is about 27%. I don't know, Susie, you probably know all this better than I do, but. I was trying to figure out why, and I think that's what it is. It's it's listen to what your followers are interested in, and you know, I, I only once or twice post a day about something that I've written or we've posted on the blog, and I'm finding um, that the head of the guy that runs BuzzFeed, I forget his name, he came from uh, Google. I heard him speak, and he said that their social channels are um, a bigger. Uh, spot place of engagement for BuzzFeed than their actual site, their actual, you know, website. So I don't know where it's all going and, and I hear people say, oh, Facebook's on its way out. I don't really know because tomorrow it'll be a different thing and there'll be a new platform or a different platform. Um, but it seems to be working and it does drive traffic to the blog and to Pinterest. And it looks like it's really what you have to do is um, integrated marketing. You know, yeah. it's always been that way with marketing before social media, but um, not everybody's in the same place at the same time, and not everybody um, wants to click through or or respond. But you know, if you'll 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 find different people in different places. And Pinterest is our smallest following, but one of our biggest traffic drivers. It just, I think you don't even have to do anything there and it drives traffic. I, I'm not understanding it yet, but there's, I'm observing it. Well, I think one of the keys that you said, Robin, was that it has to be multi-integrated. You have to almost think of it as like a progressive dinner party. And you have to go and, and feed and chat and engage with people in different spots and diff at different parties. And, you know, it's, it's called social media for a reason. It's, it's social. So we, do, oh, we, we just laugh and we just talk about being, you know, you just go into a party and you just want to meet people and, you, you know, you think of your own situations and where you find the most interesting people and it's those people that ask you about you and that get you to talk and not those people that talk about themselves all the time. I so, love that analogy because I feel like when I, when I talk to people about you know, developing their uh, creative and strategic plan I always talk about um, the dinner party you know who would you want to sit next to at a dinner party somebody that's all about them all about them and they don't ask you about you and 
they talk about things that that they have no radar to tell whether you're interested or not. And um, we all have a friend like that, right? Right. <laughs> they dream on about something, and and they're not picking up that you're completely in the ozone and you don't care. Um, but I, I really think that's a great analogy, Susie. I, I, it's really like real life, except uh, yeah. it's virtual. Yeah, exactly. I have another question too, um, for Carl and Chrissy. What I've I've found is that social media is not static, meaning that Facebook could explode at any moment. If Facebook explodes, do you have all your followers in your back pocket? And you don't have them in your back pocket unless they have subscribed to your website and you have their email. If you don't have that information, you don't have a long-term relationship with them because uh, look at MySpace. MySpace you know, it went. <laughs> uh, it could easily happen with anything that we're involved with. So my ultimate goal, I mean, if you talk about exactly what's my goal for social media, it's to get everyone I can to come back to my website and to sign up to have a newsletter or my email so I know them and yep. I connect with them. When you have an email, you've got a friend. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, build that list. Build that, build that list. list. Build that. Email is still my favorite way of engagement. I mean, personal. email I check. I don't, you know, check everything daily if I'm traveling, but email I, oh, I'm checking it constantly. You don't read my Facebook every day? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think we know what each other's doing. I think we come up on most favorite stories for each, each other. Yeah. So, Christy, what question do you have before we close out? Well, you know, as I have... In, social network kind of covered as far as Facebook, Facebook page, Twitter, um, a couple of different you know avenues there going on and as you know when you start following people it sort of starts to get myopic and everybody's in your circle and they're all your peeps and everyone's already preaching to the choir and I'm trying to reach outside of that and I know it was already mentioned to cross-pollinate with things like culinary experts and 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 that kind of thing but I really want to reach the people who aren't thinking about this at all. Right. And where do we start, you know, to really reach out to people who who are not in touch with where their food comes from and, you know, where their water's going and all of that kind yep. of stuff. Do you there's a uh, an app called Mind Mapping. It's an old tool for uh, creativity. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I would suggest is that you start download it and it helps you put things in circles. And then you burst out of that circle and you start another bubble and you drill down in that bubble. So you can think in terms of, you know, I would go to parents. You know, parents are an, an ideal segment for both of y'all uh, because parents are very concerned about the food that their children are eating. It's a great activity to do with your children. It's, you know, the, the whole obesity movement. And then think, you know, where are some other segments? Go to the grocery store, walk down the aisles of the grocery store and look at what the different, how the grocery store is segmented out and think where, where do those people hang out and just start thinking outside of the gardening box because as you say, you're preaching to the choir there. Right, yeah. Yeah, one of, uh, another idea is to um, go to the farmer's markets because people who are buying that food may not be growing their own and they may be interested. They may just not know. I mean, um, I've never seen anybody, you know, a media person or a shop that, is trying to reach gardeners uh, have a table there, but um, at the ones I've been to, but I don't know why you couldn't. Um, some other communities are, you know, retirement communities. Um, there are a bunch on the West Coast I know that are planting gardens, community gardens, little, you know, uh, insular community gardens. But I think people who retired people, you know, they have time, and they may not have the knowledge or you know the inclination because it, they don't know anything about it. So. You know, your book is perfect, Christy. And that, you know, those <laughs> so I would take your book, you know, your book is about geeks. Right. So go to some of the geek, you know, go to some of the geek magazines, some of the geek websites. That's and a good talk, idea. And talk to them about how you can get, you know, one of the big trends. For every trend, there's always an anti-trend, an opposite trend. And, you know, one of the reasons that people are gardening so much now is that we're, we're over-plugged in. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's unplugged by going out in the garden and, you know, they, now the, the whole big thing is that gardening is a new Prozac. And it's, you know, <laughs> to go, go to some of these high-tech magazines and talk to them about how gardening is a great way to get refreshed and rejuvenated 
so that you can do your job better. And it's I not have, just about growing food, it's about like the that. experience. Connecting. And there's another thing, um, I'm very inspired by Gary Vaynerchuk and I once heard him speak and uh, in person, it was really awesome and mm -hmm. I asked him the same question, almost exactly. And mm -hmm. what he told me, uh, in person even, was that I should be doing what he did at the start of his career. He, when his father gave him the, or sold him, however it worked, the wine shop, mm -hmm. Gary immediately went into his office, locked his door, and started going out to every blog he could find and talk about wine. He gave wine advice on all the culinary sites, he gave mm -hmm. wine advice in all these different categories. He uh, introduced himself to people that left comments on other blogs that had nothing to do with wine and then started talking about wine in those other categories and he brought all these consumers over. And yeah. so my suggestion is, and this, and here's the thing, he received a lot of criticism, like his dad's like, what are you thinking? You're going to ruin my business, you know? But instead, what he did was grow it because he built his reputation in every single little blog from here to China, you know? And so I think that's a great idea. That man, that man worked so hard. He had, there was a half page article or two page article in the New York Times about his business recently. And I just said, met him too. And he said something about how he answers all text. And so I said, yeah, let's see. So I texted him. And within three minutes, he had uh, texted me back. I thought, yeah. really, this is amazing. So I texted him again, and he texted me back. And it was like, this guy must, I mean, I can't imagine the number of, uh, or maybe it was Twitter. I can't remember which. But anyway, Twitter, he, he answers me his tweets. Yep. Yeah, so, I heard him speak too. And um, one thing he said was, um, just if I could just tell mm -hmm. this, the way he started was um, at the beginning of YouTube. And he said he just started making these crappy little YouTube videos and and he didn't even know what he was doing and he found out he started seeing that people were just following 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 and um, this was at the beginning of YouTube this is before you know visu the visual web was really big and we all knew that people respond emotionally to images and video he just did this and um, and you know that's really what he where, where he started he also he you know if you do follow him um, don't be don't be uh, you know, oh, offended that offended. he wears every other word. <laughs> I love that though. He's awesome. <laughs> I wouldn't encourage yeah. that, however. I wouldn't <laughs> either. Yeah, you know, I do. I do think it's a good point, Robin. That you know, people get so hung up on doing you know award-winning, Oscar-quality videos mm -hmm. or press releases that are worthy of getting a Pulitzer Prize. And the key is, is to you know, to be authentic and to get your message out. And to share, 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 share. People like to see the real, the real, the real deal. So we appreciate all of y'all sharing today. This was so much fun. My old friends and my new friends, and now we're all friends together. And we uh, really thank you, Shauna, and thank you, Robin and Christy. I'm sorry, it was so hard for me to get on. Oh no, that's Aww. okay. You know, it just goes to show that, as I said, things don't have to be perfect. We're not perfect, and we are all learning still how to do this. Google Plus, every single time you think, okay, this is going to be a perfect one this time. <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, this is, we've done many of these and we've yet to do a perfect one, so maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> now so I know how. You know, if you haven't already downloaded our trends report, uh, go to www.garden media group and click on our trends report. Um, go to our blog. We do our blog every week. We have uh, Trending Thursday. And we have blogs all during the week on how to use social media, how to use PR, how to do all kinds of things to grow your business. So we appreciate y'all being here. And let's, uh, what's our countdown? 25 days to spring? 26 Woo! days to spring? Woo! <laughs> so thank you all so much. And we appreciate y'all being here and appreciate your time. Y'all have a great you. day. Bye. Bye now. Signing off here from the Garden Media Group, this is Susan McCoy.